Hey y'all, Dr. Bud here. Learning Bud with Dr. Bud. And I teach you about everything that buds, how to grow it, how to get to its bud state, and how to maintain it. And I'm here at the CFIT hydroponic system. And today is March 24th. And what do we got going on here? C is looking good. It's on. Um, the water's going. Microgreens are going. Plants are in. I see some roots poking through from this bean. Oh, that's not from the bean, but that's from somebody else. Oh, that's so cool. Gonna have to do some uh, <clears throat> maintaining in the pipe system. But yeah, things are growing. Probably clear these uh, microgreens off. These are pretty much done. So what's today, Thursday? Yeah, by the end of this week, let's get the microgreens off and then start a new batch. Um, yeah, we have more plants coming in from the bone center system, the nursery. I know those got delivered today. Here is F. C. I'm at F. Ah. Anyway, same setup here. We have hydroponically grown plants in these, uh, um, I won't even call it deep water current, but this um, water current type. There's a stream of water in there that the plant is sucking nutrients out of. And I'll pull up bok choy to show you. Come on, bok choy. Oh, man, yeah, she's deep in there. She likes it. Anyways, her roots are in there. There we go. They're in there, They're hanging out, and she's doing very well. And there are sometimes instances where plants don't get too much water, and this one feels like it's off a bit, so I gotta fix this one. Sorry, you haven't seen it. That one is not doing good, but I'll get it back up. Kale's cool, it bounces back. Um, bok choy's coming up. Uh, I was talking to a student, we have a plan of taking white felt and putting it on the letters and doing microgreens on there. Um, gonna have to sew the felt up, and yes, Dr. Bud knows how to sew, but we'll create something that looks like a microgreen mossy garden off these letters. So the goal is to have all these letters, instead of being this industrial white look, to be more green and part of that artistic um, uh, view of this of making this more look like a natural system even though it's industrialized you know built for an urban environments indoor environments we, we can still make it look like part of the outdoors and that was the idea behind the wood here the shipping pallets uh, it's a sustainable system well as best we can um, built to with sustainable philosophies that we teach here at the university. Um, using these shipping pallets, I mean, that was zero, that's free. So we're using these materials. Um, the work that goes into it, the artwork, it's like a s STEM project, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So the art of it is the artistic interpretation of a system like this. And this one developed for the College of Food Innovation and Technology. So these are five foot letters, tall by five feet wide. And it's here to make a statement about urban food production, how it can be sustainable and how it can be um, easy to do. Anybody can do this. Um, and I'm doing this as an artistic expression for the college. But all you have to do is water your plants. <laughs> but the system does it for you as we have it built. So trying to make this as highly automated as possible. Um, more plants went in today on I. So here is I. And we got some beans in here. And the goal with the bok choy is to get nice and big and green. And with the beans, we can move them over closer to these vertical supports and trellis the beans around it. So we cover every inch of this pipe with, um, uh, with some type of growth. And again, all the lids on these reservoirs, trying to keep a nice microgreen garden. This one probably has like, again, another day or so 
And what we'll do is we'll throw all the seeds out, or the, not the yeah, yeah, all the seeds and all the baby plants, we'll throw it outside. That'll feed the uh, birds out there. They're out hunting for seeds, so that'll be cool. So that goes sustainable and, you know, makes you sustainable, connecting with nature again, um, feeding the birds and squirrels. Um, and then we can lay new seeds down. I'll take these fabrics home. We're going to keep them. I'll wash them. Um, and just, I'll do it in hot water. I won't use any detergents. And, mm, yeah, nothing too caustic. We don't want anything of that stuff in the food system. So I think just hot water, washing it. And then I can even autoclave it in the uh, bone center labs. Get it really sterile. And then lay it back down as um, a new lawn for seed. Well, we do have a lot of it here. And I chose white because we don't want any dyed cloth or material and that dyed leaking into the system. Right now, the water looks a little bit brown, but that's because of the nutrients we put in it. But we want to make sure that we're not adding anything to the system, but just water and the nutrients we give it. Here's tea. Got some new plants in it. Okay. And here's the microgreen garden. And again, you see the brown, that's just the nutrients. And I'm hoping that comes out in a nice, vigorous, hot water uh, wash. What I'm feeling here is the nutrients. Uh, they're made up of these two types of salts. That's why when you look at hydroponic nutrients, they come in um, different containers. So you'll have like a grow and then a micronutrient and then a flowering nutrient. Okay. They keep them separate because the nutrients are really these elements that we keep in their salt form so that when we add it to water, it dissolves and the plants can get to it. But if you add those together and then add it to the water, they'll create what we call an insoluble salt. And you'll get what looks like salt in the solution and plants can't pick that up. So that's what I'm feeling here are these salt crystals, okay? But um, uh, it's really cool that, you know, chromatographically through separation, through a solid phase that you can get salts out. But that's where we have to pH the system just right. And we're pHing it at about like 6.0, and it keeps these, uh, the nutrients in the solution from going into their solid salt phase. So what we're giving the plants is just liquid food, and they're loving it. Growth is a little bit slow. Um, we are way ahead of normal biological seasons for the majority of what we're planting here, but we're having some success. Um, we can increase plant growth with more energy. So this is that E equals MC squared type of equation. So there's the science in growing hydroponically. Basically, we need more energy for more matter. And I have these uh, grow lights here and they're nice and they look nice at night but we do have big ones. And our goal is to take the big ones and string them across these two posts and have them provide the illumination for the system. And then we should at least increase, increase plant production um, measurably. As the system matures, again, as I mentioned in earlier videos, I'll be teaching my students how to clone so, learning bud with Dr. Bud. Here's a bud right there, look at that. I'll zoom in. A bud. Right there. And there's a bud right there. And another bud there. Uh, these are um, um, meristems. Okay. And region of plant growth. Okay. And these are lateral branches. They have meristematic tissue at the tips. And a region of active uh, plant growth on the stem is called a node. So that's a node where we find these buds. Sorry, I'm out of focus. Okay, node where we find the buds. Okay, so node, node, let me get out of focus again. Okay, and space in between is an inner node. So I'll be teaching my students how to use um, nodes to make cuttings so that we can vegetatively clone the plant. Yes. I can copy this plant by cutting it and putting it in the system and let it propagate. And by doing that, we don't have to go back to the seed germination phase 
Anyways, I'm gonna be doing a lot of cutting because I want to uh, shape this system into these letters. So we're gonna have to start cutting and topping them. So we'll be doing a lot of cuttings of these side buds and cloning and rooting and putting it back in the system and then trellising them and shaping them. So again, more expressions of the art here. All right, that's all for now on this rainy Thursday out here. Learn the bow with Dr. Bud. Later.